Billy Ray Turner is one of two accused killers in the murder of NBA star Lorenzen Wright. Wright's body was discovered in these woods a few days after his mother reported him missing in July of 2010. Because he put it on me because he knew I was going to take care of him. The mystery surrounding his death baffled investigators for years until a break in the case led to this announcement in 2018. This morning, the Shelby County Grand Jury indicted Billy R. Turner for the premeditated first-degree murder of Lorenzen Wright. But Turner denies any involvement in Wright's death. He wants, you know, his day in court. Billy Ray Turner faces life in prison if he is convicted of first-degree murder. This is a case that is something else to watch because a lot of the details are just now being learned during this trial. This murder was 12 years ago, 12 years ago in 2010, uh, July 18, July 19 is the time when Lorenzen Wright was murdered. Now on trial, Billy Ray Turner, but we know that he had some type of relationship with the ex-wife of the victim, Shira Wright. She pled guilty in 2019 to facilitation of first degree murder of this victim. Now with us, I want to go live to Memphis, Tennessee, where our own Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter is right outside of the courtroom. Chanley, tell us what, first of all, it's been like today, day three in this case. Well, it's been a full day of testimony for this jury to take in with one of the detectives walking them through some more findings about the crime scene and about the ballistics in this case. There was a firearms expert who was able to tell this jury that the casings found at the crime scene matched the weapon that the detective showed them was found in a lake led there, but of course, by Jimmy Martin, a state's star witness. We could hear from him, by the way, tomorrow, Ashley, in this trial. And then this afternoon after lunch has been full of some cell phone a data. The expert is on the stand walking this jury through some of the records of Billy Ray Turner, of Shira Wright, and really there was a powerful moment right before the afternoon break where on the screen, and the juror has a packet here, they're following along with what this expert's uh, testifying about, and they were able to see that based on cell phone tower data that the cell phone of Billy Ray Turner was in the same area as Lorenzen Wright's cell phone when he was making that 911 call right before he was shot. So some moments coming in and the jury seems to be taking it well and taking a lot of notes. And that was one of my questions. Before we talk about some of the amazing interviews that you've done while you're there, tell me about the jury in terms of the cell phone because it, it's hard to listen to all of the details about cell phone records and cell phone towers and pings and it can be a little tedious. Does this, is this jury, do you think, grasping the reality of these cell phone records can tell you at least where the cell phone of the defendant was the night of the murder? Right. They do seem to be taking it in and understanding. And as I said, they have a copy in their hands of the actual report that the expert is going through. There's a lot of visual elements to the presentation, which helps it make it a little more understandable and easier to follow along with. And you know, I was taking some of the notes down of these cell phone records, which are limited because when they did go back to try to pull these cell phone records, they were only able to obtain about a month's worth of Billy Ray's cell phone records. So they didn't get everything they wanted like text messages and emails and things like that. It was just the voice calls. And if you go back and look at some of the voice calls between Billy Ray Turner and Shira Wright between that month before and after this murder of Lorenzen Wright, 186 calls between the two of them. They also had voice calls between Billy Ray Turner and Jimmy Martin. There were 17 calls between those two. And then, of course, Shira Wright and Jimmy Martin, 65 calls. So, again, this prosecution really wanted to use the cell phone data to show that this was a... a conspiracy relationship between these three people communicating a lot and especially leading up to the murder those um, hours and moments before uh, he was shot July of 2010. And that was during one month time so that is a lot of communication arguably. All right Chanley your interviews tell me about the fact as I understand it you may have spoken to an ex-boyfriend of the ex-wife of the victim did I get that right? <laughs> you did get that right. I did. I caught up with Kelvin Cowens. He was in a relationship with Shira Wright starting in 2015.
2018, he actually interviewed her the way they met. He interviewed her for the fifth year anniversary of the murder of Lorenzen Wright. And he told me that during that interview with Shira that they connected on more than just a professional level and began a relationship. She actually moved with him and her six children to Houston, Texas, where they lived for almost three years together in this relationship. So I wanted to catch up with him and gain some more insight as to the Shira Wright that he knew. And he told me what it was like to find out later when she was indicted and arrested and how looking back, he was able to kind of see maybe what he thought was grief wasn't grief. Let's take a listen. First time in your years of knowing her that red flags went up? Absolutely. Um, you see, up until that point, it was like I thought I was looking at someone that was grieving. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I mistaken that for, you know, what it really was because, you know, all of the crying at night, um, Cheryl would often go in our master closet and pray and cry herself to sleep. And I'm talking to her like, she'll go in there like 10 o'clock at night and stand there until 2 in the morning. I have to go get her sometimes and be like, come on to bed. So it's just weird that the tables turn and it's like, okay, I thought I was looking at grief, but this is guilt. You know what I mean? I didn't know that, you know, so. But that was my first time to answer your question. That was my first time that a red flag went up. Like, we're all, you know, they found the gun. We're going to find out. And she just, that wasn't her. It wasn't long after they ended their relationship, which he said really stemmed from financial arguments and turmoil. He, turmoil, excuse me. He said that Shira was almost obsessed over finances and wanting to purchase a lot of elaborate items and spending upwards of 15 grand for Christmas, and that just wasn't the lifestyle that they could afford or they were living, and that uh, was really what caused them to part ways. But it wasn't long after they broke up, Ashley, that he says. They discovered, they announced that they discovered the murder weapon of Lorenzen Wright, and her reaction wasn't what he expected. Let's take a listen. You know, um, even though we didn't make it as a couple, you know, from time to time we would talk or text. And so when they found the gun, I hit her up. You know, I, I text her. I'm like, yo, they found the gun that killed Lorenzen. You know, we're about to find out, you know, because it was one of those things where I wanted her to win. I wanted her. To, to be vindicated. I wanted to find the killers. I'm a, I'm a Memphis Tiger fan. We had Tigers before we had the Grizzlies. You know what I mean? So I'm a, I'm a Lorenzo Wright fan, you know? Um, and so I was excited because I'm like, I know that gun is going to lead us to the killers. And she just wasn't in that mood. She was just kind of like, well, I heard that it's not a gun. Um, I heard that someone's lying. They're making up stories. And I'm like... That was the moment where I was like, this don't sound like the Cheryl that I've been listening to for two years. Because um, we would often listen to the 911 call, you know, that um, court TV show. Um, and I'd be, we'd be trying to figure it out. It was always, can't wait to find out who did this to Lorenzo. And it was always that. I mean, all of these um, speeches during Christmas, during Thanksgiving, I wasn't opposed to it, you know. And it's like, now that we got the gun, you're like, she, she just wasn't feeling it. And I was like, something's not right. You know what I mean? It changed. It wasn't the reaction you expected. No, I was excited. I expected her to be excited. You know, um, like I said, I had texted her and everything and hit her up. And um, I got the news before her because I was in Memphis and she's in California. And when she called me, she was so somber. And I was like, they found the gun. We, I said, this works like this. You know, we got the gun. Police going to track down the bullet. They're going to, you know, the fingerprint up from the bullet. And all. I'm like, we're going to get, we're going to find out. And she just was just broken about it. And I was like, this is not right. Something is terribly wrong. And, of course, the reaction that he observed from Shira was reflected in the testimony yesterday of when the authorities wiretapped Shira. She didn't seem happy. She was even suicidal when they announced that they had found the weapon that murdered her ex-husband. And, of course, uh, Kelvin, he goes on to talk about what he hopes to find out. Uh, during this trial that he doesn't know and what that's whether or not Shira was one of those with the weapon who actually shot and helped murder uh, Lorenzen. And Chanley, that was one of my questions. Is that the reason that he's there? Of course, we know these trials are open to the public. Anybody can go. But but why is he there being an ex-boyfriend? Why is he there watching the trial? Yeah. 
Well, he's followed this for years. In fact, he's published a book about his relationship with Shira Wright. He's also working on a documentary called One Million Reasons. And I asked him about that, and he says it's not what people may think, which is that $1 million life insurance policy that Lorenzen had that Shira uh, benefited from and spent uh, pretty quickly. But there's a lot more to the story. And he said as a journalist and in his interviews with Shira in the beginning, he had a lot of recorded conversations with her. And that's a big part of this documentary. He wants people, he wants to put it out there, uh, everything that he's observed in his relationship and let people decide you know, what they think about Shira Wright and maybe what him motivated her to be a part of this murder plot. And when she pled guilty, I know she got 30 years with two years credit. So that's where she is right now in jail. Chanley Painter, I know you're going to need to be getting back into that courtroom. We're going to take a break. When we come back, of course, we'll take you live back into Tennessee versus Billy Ray Turner.